guys, Miss Campbell here. Today we're going to talk about the Civil War and states' rights. Slavery was the big issue um, that kind of divided the nation. Uh, the North had immigrant labor to work in factories because the Industrial Revolution had hit. They had all these people coming over from Western Europe that needed jobs. So there were probably more people than jobs in the North. So that was not an issue with them. The South, however, had an agricultural economy. And this economy relied upon the slaves to do the work. Economic differences led to sectional disagreements. Um, the South was not necessarily trading with the North. They were taking those raw goods like cotton and sending them to the North to be manufactured into something else like clothing in the factories up there. What they were doing is they were trading with Europe. And because of this, the federal government was not getting a piece of the action. And so by adding a tax on to these goods coming in, they was doing one of two things. Either A, they were going to get some money out of it, or B, it was going to discourage the South from trading with Europe because their goods were much more expensive because of the tax. The South believed that the states had the right to ignore tariffs and, and other federal laws. And under the state's rights argument, the state power was greater than the federal power. So the state government superseded the, the federal government. Another problem was westward expansion. Um, people in the South believe that slavery should expand into the new territories or into the new states. So there were several um, measures that were put in place to kind of appease everyone. The first one was the Compromise of 1850. And this created a way for territories to become states. And so this was something that the North was getting. And in return, the South got the Fugitive Slave Law. Prior to the Fugitive Slave Law, if a slave was able to escape and make their way north, um, the people in the North were not obliged to send them back. Um, with the Fugitive Slave Law, they were. Um, the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, the states could decide whether to be a slave or a free state, but they had to come in together um, because you didn't, there was a very delicate balance of power in Congress. You didn't want too many free states because they could abolish slavery and you didn't want too many slave states because we didn't want slavery spreading into the new territories. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the Missouri Compromise stated that no states could uh, no slave states could be north of the 36 degree 30 minute line so basically here nothing nothing uh no slave states could be up here in the north uh the supreme court and division okay dred scott was a slave whose master and he were very friendly and they moved him up into the free territory. So he was living basically as a free man in the northern territories that did not have slavery. And before the master could fill out paperwork for him to be a, a free man, um, he died. So because of the Fugitive Slave Law, Dred Scott's master's wife's family um, had him brought back because of the Fugitive Slave Law. And the abolitionists got involved. Abolitionists are people who are uh, anti-slavery. They got together with Dred Scott and they decided to sue the uh, federal government about you know Dred Scott being free because he was in a free territory. The decision that the Supreme Court said or ruled was that African Americans were not citizens and therefore could not sue in federal court, which was kind of a bummer for Dred Scott. Congress could not ban slavery in federal territories either. Uh, Republican Abraham Lincoln won the election and received no electoral votes from the South. Um, the South was very afraid that he would abolish slavery 
and South Carolina seceded from the Union, followed by Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana. Texas had a decision to make. They called a special meeting to discuss, discuss secession, and this angered unionists. And there are a lot of unionists. One in four Texans were unionists. So unionists are people who wanted to stay in the union. Collin County was a unionist county. Was a unionist county. Um, Sam Houston was also a unionist. And on March 2nd, 1861, Texas seceded from the union after the people voted. Uh, Sam Houston was forced to resign as governor because he refused to take the oath of allegiance to the Confederacy. And after all the stuff that Sam Houston had done in his life, you know, he was a governor of two states. He was the general of the Texas Army. He was the president twice. He was a senator from the state of Texas. After all that stuff he did, he died feeling like he was a failure because of this particular instance when they decided to join the Confederate states. Um, in February of 1861, in Montgomery, Alabama, representatives from seceding states formed a new government. They wrote a new constitution that em emphasized the sovereignty or the supremacy of the state and uh, right of the people to own slaves. On March 5th, 1861, Texas wrote a new constitution, which was basically the same document. It's almost like they kind of crossed off the United States of America and wrote in the Confederate States of America. All right, so this is it for the slavery and states rights presentation. If you guys have any questions, there is a discussion that is set up in Canvas um, under Civil War. Feel free to ask any questions. If your classmates can't answer it, I will be checking them and answering them as well. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.